I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to be chairman. <laughs> and our first speaker of the afternoon is Wen Xuan Lu, or Lu, I don't know, from Tsinghua University on stability conditions, attractors, and mirror symmetry. That's his written. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the title is Attractors, uh, Stability Conditions, and uh, Mirror Symmetry. Of course, Mirror Symmetry is a uh, mirror symmetry of Calabial. And uh, stability conditions are some conditions for some categories, and uh, presumably they are related to some partial difference equations. As for attractors, they are attractors for black holes. Sounds mysterious how these things can be related. Uh, I should say the purpose, the main purpose of this talk is to do some advertising for physicists. I think there are some remarkable physical ideas that should be more well known to uh, mathematicians who study near symmetry. Uh, towards the end of the talk, I will describe the little piece of work that I did. Basically, I verified a, a very simple case, maybe two simple cases of uh, general, much bigger picture. So let me start with this question. What is a uh, Calabial circle? I don't know the answer. <laughs> okay, you could say, well, it's a uh, threefold with trivial canonical bundle, or uh, if you believe that's why they, it should be a uh, total space of some singular special Lagrangian tolerance vibration. Well, these answers are helpful, but I feel that they are not complete. To appreciate that, we have to go back to the, uh, the I think the best way is to go back to the uh, to Yao's solution of Calabi's conjecture. A couple of years ago, Yao wrote a book called The Shape of Inner Spaces. Uh, this is a very good book. I strongly recommend it, although it was written for non-mathematicians. In this book, Xingang Yao described some early history of his investigation of Calabi's conjecture. One of the reasons that uh, Yao was interested in Calabi's conjecture was Yao's background in general relativity. Okay, if the Kähler manifold has trivial canonical bundles, then Calabi's conjecture predicts the existence of the Ricci flat metric. But the Ricci flatness condition is nothing but the Einstein's equation in the vacuum. By this I mean we usually Einstein's equation has a non-zero right hand side, which is called the stress energy tensor. It describes the distribution of matter and energy in space time. If this term is zero, that means the space time is empty. There is no mass, there is no ma uh, energy. So that's what I mean by the vacuum. From this perspective, Calabi's conjecture is very counterintuitive. Initially, you all thought it could not be right. Of course, later, Y'all proved that it was right. So why it was so counterintuitive? Because you see, if we are in a vacuum, there is no matter of energy. And yet, the metric is not flat. I mean, if, if uh, Calab Yaw is not a uh, uh, torus, then it's richly flat, but not flat. Then that means Calabi's conjecture predicts the existence of compact, empty, yet still curved space. Uh, people usually say that uh, matter and the energy is the source of gravity. If there is no matter and energy, how could there be gravity? Well, people can also say that because the equation is nonlinear, so maybe the gravity acts as its own source. Well, it's hard to exclude this possibility, but it's also very hard to imagine a scenario in which this can be true. So that's why initially you also this kind of space, compact, empty, yet curved space, cannot exist. Okay, of, of course later he actually proved, proved this kind of space can exist. That's why this is a great result. Yao also talked to Calabi about this perspective and uh, Calabi was not very impressed because for Calabi his conjecture was about some very nice structure in Kähler geometry. Why would someone relate it to general relativity? But uh, later in 1980s when string theories took Calabi Yao into physics, one of the reasons they need the Calabi-Yau space is because 
it's a, a part of the 10 dimensional space time, which is a solution of Einstein's equation in the vacuum. So nowadays, when we say uh, we are starting mirror symmetry of a Calabi-Yau threefold in type 2a or type 2b string theory, well, type 2a and type 2b are in 10 dimensional. So how come we just study six dimensional space time? That's because we all make the hidden assumption, which is the 10 dimensional space time is the product of a Calabi Yau threefold and a flat Minkowski four dimensional space time. Okay, so there's nothing wrong about it, but if you are a four dimensional person, then this assumption seems to be too strong, too, too special. So why? Don't we assume that maybe we can consider the scenarios uh, the four dimension is not flat, maybe it's a black hole. Or maybe the product is not a direct product, the product metric. Okay, so this possibility has been investigated by uh, many uh, physicists. So we have a 10 dimensional space time, and uh, after appropriate reduction to 4D, we have a black hole, not a flat Minkowski space. And somehow the information of cardio threefold can be encoded in the four dimensional uh, geometry of black hole. Um, and uh, in this study, physicists uh, discovered a remarkable thing called the attractor mechanism. Um, maybe I should, before explaining what this is, uh, maybe I should uh, give you a sort of toy version, baby version of black holes in, in case uh, you are not very familiar with this, this terminology. So let me just forget about the off for a second. Let's consider a so-called uh, Rizma North Strong black hole, which is a static spherical black hole with non-trivial electric magnetic charge. So it's just a little bit more special than the well-known Schwarzschild black hole. So the, it's four-dimensional, the metric is this. Here, d omega is uh, the standard uh, metric on the two-sphere because uh, it's a spherical symmetric ansatz. And uh, t is time, and the rho is the uh, radial direction. And uh, the function f rho is uh, 1 minus 2f over rho plus t squared plus 2 squared over rho squared. Here, pq is a, a pair of constants called electric and the magnetic part. So, can you read? Can you read the second term? I can't. Oh, it's uh, f of rho, the one over f. But f of what, what is that strange symbol between the f and the parentheses? What? F inverse? Yeah, yeah f, f inverse. Oh, what does f inverse mean? If f is not inverted. You mean one over f? Yeah, one over. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's not what you meant by f inverse, and I, I couldn't yeah. guess. Okay. So p and q play the symmetric role. So what would you mean? And, it's, and you call that number p squared plus oh, squared the, plus. Which one is called electric? Which one is called magnetic? You could just call it a or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, M here is the so-called the, the, the mass, and uh, there is a singularity at. Uh, rho equals zero because one can calculate the curvature it blows up there. And uh, there are two uh, zeros of f rho located at, let me call them rho plus and rho minus at m plus the square root of m squared minus t squared minus q squared. Okay, if So if we, if m is less than the square root of p squared plus q squared, then 
of course, we don't have these uh, rho plus and rho minus. And uh, in physical term, we say we have a naked singularity, and the physicists say this is unphysical. We can't accept that. So that's why we always assume that m is greater than or equal to the square root. This is for the BPS bond. And uh, that's not really the, the case I want to discuss. I want to discuss a very special case. This is a BPS case, which means this lower bond is centric. In other words, m is exactly the square root of p squared plus q squared, in which case we just have one row that's going to equal zero. And uh, this is called uh, horizon or event horizon. This is, uh, if you analyze uh, the behavior of lights, the geodesics, then it's uh, the borderline between uh, where you can go back and where you cannot. And uh, what's interesting is uh, we can start the near horizon behavior of the black hole. In other words, we introduce a new order equal r. So when r is equal to zero, we are over the horizon. And uh, when r is small, it's easy to analyze that the uh, dom dominating behavior of the metric, this is called the near horizon geometry. The dom dominating behavior of the metric is given by t squared plus q squared, which is constant times this and this measure, where z here is t squared plus q squared over okay. r. So this is called ABS times uh, ABS2 times S2 geometry. The first term is called n type of sphere space. The second term is, of course, the sphere. So the near horizon geometry of this uh, BPS reasonable non strong black hole is given by ABS times S2. ABS2 times S2. And uh, what, what's the point of this example? The point is if you care about only the near horizon behavior, in particular, if you only want to compute the area of the event horizon, then it depends only on the targets, because this is a, a constant times the, the sphere. So why is this significant? Because by some uh, classical argument of Bekenstein and Hawking, one can introduce the entropy for the black holes, and the entropy is equal to A over 4, where A is the area of the horizon. So that means, well, in this case, it's just a just a pi times this guy, which depends only on charges. So the lesson here is charges completely determine the entropy. Okay, so this is my uh, baby example. Now let's get back to the 10-dimensional scenario. We actually have an inner space, a three-dimensional Calabi-Yau. Now, we still want to study black holes with electric magnetic charges, but now the question is, well, what are these charges? I mean, if, if we think of the black hole as a four-dimensional reduction of some 10-dimensional geometry, then these charges should have interpretations in terms of the inner space. And turns out, we uh, the charges here, let me use uh, gamma denoted, is H3 of the cardinal threefold. So here, topologically, just topologically, uh, we assume that the 10 dimensional space is uh, space time is Calabi-Yau threefold times the four dimensional black hole. So you still want a product, not a vibration or? Well, topologically, yes, but. Uh, why? It's a sort of simple answer. It's a but why not? 
Um, you would imagine if the universe is big that things can change, so why shouldn't it be a non-trivial fiber bundle? Well, that's because, simply because that's more yeah. complicated. Yeah, okay. That's good answer. This is already too, too difficult. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, okay, so of course you can pick a, a symplectic basis and uh, A cycle and B cycle and uh, write it as uh, a pair of numbers. Then that's uh, electric, uh, geometric version of electric magnetic charge. So you might ask, what's the geometric meaning of this thing? Hypothetically, this should be the point pair U of some special Lagrangian cycles in F. OK, why do we want to consider special Lagrangian cycles? This is basically due to the big picture conjectured by physicists. They believe that black holes are made of debris. The difference between black holes and the debris is given by the string coupling constant. When the coupling is weak, the so-called perturbation theory for the word sheet signal model is good, then we see geometrically we see a bunch of debris. When the coupling is strong, we cannot ignore gravity, and we would see instead of debris, we would see black holes. And there should be some way to relate these two notions. And uh, one of the triumphs in 1990 was that physicists was able to use this picture de to derive the uh, Bechstein Hawking's entropy formula from the study of debris. Also, this is a, a basis of so called uh, ADS CRT correspondence. Of course, this is very hard to justify and understand for mathematicians because. Uh, if you know about mirror symmetry, then usually the burns are just depending on A model, B model, the uh, special Lagrangians or some bundles, homomorphic submantles. But here we have black holes. These are extremely different objects. So how can they be related? There's no way to justify that. Fortunately, uh, physicists can derive some consequences from this wild picture. And these consequences uh, can be handled by mathematicians. So basically, they, they just uh, Im imitate what people did for the, the sort of the trivial case, uh, n times uh, Minkowski space. Uh, so remember, even in this case, we actually, usually we split the complex moduli and the Taylor moduli of n, because we this is that we use some low energy effective theory, and we can, but also use Yaw's solution of collapse conjecture. At least locally, we can split the moduli of rich flat metric as a moduli of complex structure and Taylor structure, and that gives us A model and B model. And here, in this scenario, people can actually do the similar thing, and uh, there is a similar picture. So, in other words, it makes sense to still talk about type A and a type B theory. So in the type B theory, turns out, type B theory, turns out the Taylor moduli is fixed. I'll explain what it means to be fixed. And uh, the complex moduli is changing. OK, what, 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 what does this mean? OK, he, so here we, we're actually using a and ANSATS, which is a static and a spherical symmetric ANSATS. And then there is a radial direction rho goes from uh, out, goes from zero to infinity. Infinity is uh, spatial infinity. And the zero is supposedly the horizon, location of horizon. Okay, then, okay, although topologically it's a, a trivial uh, vibration, but not so geometrically. So we could imagine with different r, different value of r, the moduli of m over different r's are different. Okay. Then the if you we impose a BGS, this is a super symmetric condition, and we make some uh, simplifying assumption, and we are in type two B theory. Then they can argue that in this case 
when we go from infinity to zero, k moduli is fixed, but complex moduli is changing. And it's not changing arbitrarily. It's described by the equation called the tractor flow. Uh, maybe let me just introduce a few notations and write it down. So we can, to describe the complex moduli, we use the homomorphic straightforward. A straightforward uh, on M. Okay. And uh, we also have this chart here. And uh, we have the Hodge decomposition. We can compose the charge, this, uh, the, this, the degree 3 cohomology class, as gamma 3 0 plus gamma 2 1 plus gamma 1 2 plus gamma 0 3, the Hodge decomposition. Of course, the uh, gamma is topological invariant. But the decomposition depends on the complex structure. Okay. And also, we, since we are moving complex moduli, so we, we should say upstairs we are actually seeing a flow in the moduli space of complex structures. So we also introduce some uh, coordinates depending on R on complex moduli space. Wait, excuse me. So, so what does that mean? So the M, you move M from infinity to zero, right? So, you uh, mean any individual M, the complex, complex modular space chain? So, what was that? The, I mean, the, the Taylor moduli, the topology thinks the Taylor moduli thinks that the complex moduli is changing according to the equation I'm going to write down. The, the manifold, the underlying manifold is fixed. So, yeah, so, so your complex moduli may be like a, a quasi projective variety or something, is that right? I, mean, I, I don't see the point of uh, assuming projectivity because it's not about the algebraic geometry. It's, uh, so, so yeah. for example, M, that's the case surface, and uh, you got a uh, uh, complex modulus, basically, right? Yeah. Actually, I'm going to describe the example which exactly involves K3 surface, and uh, you will see how okay. it's done. Okay. So, we have a homomorphic three form, we have a Hodge decomposition depending on the complex structure, and we have coordinates on the uh, modular space of complex structure of M. Um, uh, of course, there are many ways to, to pick coordinates, maybe, because, for example, you can use the period, you can integrate the homomorphic three form over some cycles. And the equation, the derived from the requirement of supersymmetry is something like this. I should say, the first of all, the, the static spherical ansatz is something we are familiar with. It's like this. This is uh, what we see in the four dimension. Almost uh, actually, it's uh, of the exactly the same form of the reasonable of strong uh, ansatz. I just uh, replace f by e to the two u because it's more convenient. Because the u is a unknown function, it depends on r. Okay. Is it minus sign? Yeah, there is a minus sign because it's a Lorentzian signature. Yeah, I think one of the f is e to the two u and e to the minus two u. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay. Then the the, the, the attractor flow in this couple dynamical system d u over d tau is equal to uh, negative e to the u the square root of z and the d s i over d tau is equal to negative e to the u g i j r d j bar. Okay. What are these notations? Uh, So the, this tau is just one over r, and this gij bar is just the repeater symmetric on the modular space. And this z here, this is crucial, it's called the central charge. It depends on omega, in other words, it depends on the complex structure. It also depends on 
gamma to the, the charge here. That's just the gradient. And uh, it's just uh, the integral of omega of h gamma over f. Okay. And this is the absolute value. And uh, you can do some change of variables, and uh, you can see that this is the second equation is actually a gradient flow in the modular space with some potential functions. And uh, actually, I don't really want to study the the global behavior of this, no, I should say. I, I, I only interested in the behavior of fixed points or attractors of this uh, dynamical system. In other words, we are looking for, uh, well, it's not completely obvious, but it's true. In other words, when we take, when we take R, uh, we, R goes to zero. The norm of Z goes to a local minimum. And if this local minimum is now vanishing, then then the complex moduli at zero would be very special. And this condition is called the attractor equation. So this condition is so at r equals zero, which is z is equal to a non-vanishing local mean, minimum. The Hodge decomposition has only three zero and the zero three part. Okay. This may not be very obvious from this equation. It is not, but it's true. One has to use some non-trivial identities in, in the so-called special geometry of modular space to, to, to derive it, but it's true. So, okay, what, what does this mean? This means, well, first of all, it means we can start at infinity with continuously changing moduli of complex structure. You can even pick any complex moduli here. But when we go to the horizon, event horizon, the moduli will be attracted to the local minimum. And this, the complex moduli over the horizon would be, very, would be some very special points in the complex modular space. It's actually easy to see because the number of equations and the number of variables are the same. We expect that these points are isolated. And uh, then that means in the modular space of complex structure, we have these special attractors, maybe more than one. And uh, in this black hole, at infinity, I can pick as a boundary condition any uh, complex module. But as long as it's in the basin of attraction of, say, this attractor, then at the horizon, it will be attracted to this, to this guy, to this attractor. And this attractor here, the complex module, this very special complex module here, is completely determined by the charge. So this is a very non-trivial. Let me write this down. So in other words, the charges completely determines the horizon modular. Why is this important? Because if you could imagine, OK, if you, you are building a black hole, which is the reduction of some temperature stuff, then the modula of the three-dimensional inner space would contribute to the behavior of the, uh, to the geometry of the black hole. This is true, but the near horizon does not depend on the modula that can continuously change. It only depends on 
the discrete data here. Okay. So this is a really a, a track mechanism. If you start here, it will be tracked. If you start here, it will be tracked. If you start here, it will be tracked. Okay. It also depends on you, of course. What what you 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 you, you is also solved in this equation. Then are you saying that omega is, well, how do you determine omega? Omega is, yeah, how do you determine omega? So the normalization of omega. Oh, the way, here we determine complex structure together with the normalization of omega in this equation. That's just a statement about gamma and then... It, 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 the, the number of uh, equation is uh, B3. The number of variables is also B3. And uh, so the deformation is a B3 minus 1. So one position okay. parameter is the normalization. So, so you may normalize the minimum to something. Is that the point? But so one point. I mean, if, if you, you already normalize this guy, then the normalization here is fixed. Yes. So that's what I'm saying. You normalize the minimum to something. Okay, <laughs> this sounds kind of abstract, so maybe let me give you an example. Okay, you could say, well, give me a Columbia threefold, and you tell me what this guy, what this uh, equation means. So can you solve it? Or what is the special modular point of the Columbia threefold is? Well, unfortunately, we don't know much about the geometry of the Columbia threefold because my purpose is not just solve this equation. I actually have to want to analyze the geometric meaning of this guy. And I already mentioned this guy should be due of some special algorithms. So I not, not only want to solve this equation at the, the event horizon, I also want to be able to identify this guy actually as a point can do of some special algorithms. But we know it's very hard to construct special algorithms for uh, Columbia Ostrico. Fortunately, we know how to handle this for K3 because we have the hyper rotation trick. K3 has a, a bunch of compatible complex structures compatible to the uh, hyper metric. If we have a holomorphic sub-manifold of the K3 and then after a hyper rotation, we change the compatible complex structure, it becomes a special algorithm. So that's why I want to consider K3. So but, uh, up to now, which uh, of what you said depends on the metric of the Calabria. Uh, metric of what? The Calabria M. Oh, it's gone <laughs> because I. Yeah, yeah. Because I I used this BPS ansatz, and uh, you see when we do supersymmetry, we don't state the condition in terms of metrics. We state this condition in terms of forms and yes. spinners. And in particular for Calabria, so I'm not claiming that the, over each point we have a rich flat fiber here. This is too strong. Actually, people can write down the answers here and they argue inside, uh, in general, it may not be rich flat. They can only argue that in the uh, infinity and uh, over the horizon it's rich flat. Between these two extreme cases, they are interpolated by not necessarily rich flat fibers. But that does not affect the discuss of Taylor modular and the complex modular, because it's an effective theory. Um, OK, so as I said, we want to study K3. So this was done by Greg Moore. So he studied the, the, he studied the, the M, which is a K3 times the torus. So this is our. Uh, Threefold as is a K3 surface. And then Moore solved the attractor equation. Okay, maybe let me fix the chart first. We can uh, pick dx and dy. This is uh, on the P2. And we pick uh, PQ from H2 of S. And then um, uh, also we have tau, which is complex modular. Of I have a question. Okay. So, no, you have a K3 surface, right? So, yes. then you have a fix the complex modular space. So, uh, that would mean complex modular space is changing. No. 
I don't need the. I, I, I mean, K3 service is K3 service, right? And then I, I, K3 has many complex modular, and I'm now describing the complex modular at the horizon position. Okay. This line is actually not necessary. So maybe next sentence will will solve the, the problem. The next sentence is the uh, the moduli over horizon or equivalent to the attract attractor. This is due to more. Is the singular K3 surface in the sense of in the sense of uh, I know Shiada corresponding to the following quadratic form capital Q P Q capital Q P Q is this matrix P square P dot Q P dot Q Q square where P dot Q is uh, intersection parallel cohomology class. And what does that mean? Basically Moore saw that equation and he discovered that if if we were discussing the horizon model or the single tractor, then the pika number of S has to be 20. Basically, this is because it has to be the orthogonal complement of the lattice generated by these two guys in, a, in H2. And uh, H2 has rank 22. The, this is the largest possible pika number. Because this is the rank of the uh, H11 intersecting the uh, H2. Okay. Uh, so this has to be something very special because it, this, this kind of case series has have very have largest possible of pika number. And it turns out these kind of case series surfaces have been classified in the 1970s by, by these two geometers. And they have one one correspondence to such quadratic forms. Basically, if you have a, such a, a, a K3 surface, you just write down the intersection matrix, you get the quadratic form. Conversely, given a quadratic form, you know, send the shell that they, they use some abelian surface, take some involution, do some Kummer construction, construct some uh, very careful ramified double cover so that uh, these conditions can be checked. So basically, they have explicit description of the, those horizon K3 is uh, solving the project. Uh, are these large complex structure tables? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Actually, they can even show this is an elliptic vibration with such. No. So, so this limit point is sort of at the boundary of modular space. The, the what? Mm -hmm. So the boundary of no, modular no, 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 no. It's a non singular point, it's an integer point. So you're working with a singular space cross T. Oh, no, this, this, this word does not mean singular. It's just the word chosen by these mathematicians. It's an arithmetic it's a, condition. It's, it's a, I think it's a bad, bad name. So <laughs> more <laughs> insists that we should put an attractive case rate. We should not put a single case rate. Not attractive OK, no. OK, so as I promised, if you understand this, since we are dealing with case three times powers, you should be able to write down the uh, special Lagrangians. <laughs> and uh, that's the case. So basically, if you pick any uh, element from the pika lattice of S, and uh, also I write the volume form, I'm moving one more volume form on the chorus as dx uh, plus tau dy. Then it's easy to check if I define u, which is L wedge dy. Then this is due to a uh, special operation cycle after a uh, hypercalic rotation that takes the product metric and the product complex structure. Okay, <laughs> so th th this is kind of trivial. And then there is this simple but crucial observation also due to physicists. Asking Wall 
Maloney and the Simons. Okay, they observe if we pick any two uh, elements of pickup lattice and I form L Li which dy, that's for the ui. And then of course we have two special in the cycles. Then the central charge of them has the same phase up to a sign. So the, let me remind you the central charge. Oh, it's here. Okay. Again, this is just a direct uh, calculation. If you think about this condition, it's actually a, a non-generic behavior. Because if you draw this picture of the modular space, okay, consider the modular space of complex structure. If you consider a condition which is given by the argument of the central charge of some charge you want, the three degree three cohomology class, is equal to the argument of another central charge of a linearly independent charge U2. Then this is one real equation. So the locus of it should be a co-dimensional, real co-dimensional one locus inside the modular space. It has a name. This is called the marginal stability wall. So now this condition tells you, okay, so, so remember this lattice is very huge, the rank is huge, it's 20. So there are many walls. Now, if there are two walls, then the generically the intersection should be like this. If there are three walls, generically the intersection should be like this. But no, the physicists say if we are at the horizon modular, where over the attractor, then it's like this. So these real co-dimensional long walls, as long as these charges are from the rank 20 lattice, they all intersect at the same, this is a track. Okay, so this is certainly a non-generic situation. It's just another way of saying that the, the, the attractors are very special. Okay, so I, I read this paper some time ago, and then I realized this, although computation itself is completely trivial. But uh, if you think of this fact in the context of homological and uh, SYZ mirror symmetry, then it implies something that is not trivial. So that's why the title involves stability conditions and mirror symmetry. I haven't said anything about these two guys. So what's the role of stability condition and the mirror symmetry? So, let me just uh, maybe re remind you of this big picture of both homological and SYZ mirror symmetry. I'm sure it's well known to many uh, experts. So we have in mirror symmetry, we have so A models and the B models, and the mirror exchanges them. But there are several levels of questions you can ask and answer. The easiest level, the softest level, I should say, is we just consider topological degrees or topological field theory. And in the A model, that means we have Lagrangian. And, and here we, we, we could have some, uh, well, this is just a single brain. If you consider system brains, then we need to consider higher heavy. And in B side, we consider derived category of coherent sheets. So it's complex of sheets. So generalization of homological bundles. And uh, you can consider the dependence of this data. For A model, it depends on simplex structure. For B model, it depends on complex structure. And the concept which is homological mirror conjecture is a duality between a model and B models topological brains in this sense. But then there is this SYZ. So in SYZ, we do not decouple symplectic and the complex geometry. Because in SYZ, 
In A model, we consider the special Lagrangian, whose definition requires both synthetic and uh, Kahler model. Okay. And uh, here we consider, well, this is sub. As a first approximation, I should say, we consider permission young news connections on some, some bundles or sheets uh, plus some uh, generalization, corrections and generalization. Okay, so special Lagrangian means, well, it's Lagrangian and uh, the imaginary part of the homomorphic street form restricts to zero. In fact, we will have to deal with a little bit more general situation, which is a special Lagrangian with space. In other words, we introduce a constant theta, and we require the imaginary part of e to the i theta times omega. The restriction is zero. So when theta is zero, it's the original special Lagrangian. Okay. And then here, uh, Hermitian, Hermitian Young Mills connection is a, a partial differential equation. Basically, we, it means we are looking for a chain connection on a Hermitian homophobic bundle such that uh, Gij bar, Fij bar is equal, Fij bar is the curvature of the connection. Is, that's what this bundle is bundle E, is equal to a constant times i, the identity. This constant is called the mu, is called the slope of E, and it is defined to be the degree of E over the rank of E. The degree is just a, if you are in threefold, it's just a, the square of the Kähler form of which uh, C1 of e integrated over S. Okay. Then, if uh, we have a special Lagrangian fibration structure of the total space, if, if we know the Kalabi L threefold is a total space of special Lagrangian torus vibration, then uh, after uh, known Yao that's so we know we can use fiberized T duality to relate special Lagrangian here and uh, some actually some deformation of Hermitian Young Mills connection on the B side. And uh, there is also a famous algebraic characterization, which is uh, called the uh, Kobayashi teaching correspondence, also known as the uh, donaldson ulenberg yaws uh, theorem, which says we can somehow forget about the equation and uh, characterize the existence of this kind of solutions as the following identity, uh, the following inequality. Uh, for any sub-bundle f of e, the slope of f is smaller than e. This is called a stable bundle. Okay. So the existence of Hermitian Young Mills connection, the solution of PDE, is equal to a condition which can be stated completely within algebraic geometry, a stable bundle. So we have a a way, an algebraic way to categorize that. And since here we want to do derived category, we should generalize this kind of things to the derived category situation. And the generalization is called Bridgeland type stability. Basically it means we we want to generalize a consequence of the stable bundle to the derived category. The consequence is called a uh, harder and more similar filtration. Basically, it says, well, maybe not every bundle is stable, but every bundle has a filtration such that the quotient of the consecutive terms is semi-stable with decreasing slope. It's kind of technical, but the, this condition can be generalized to derive the head and the bridge then did that. Okay. If you believe in mere symmetry, then there should be a dual picture here. So there should be some kind of bridge type stability conditions, but this time in kayak energy. And this is completely open. And also on the even on the right hand side, we have an algebraic type generalization, but we are not still not able to generalize the PDE. 
So I should still put a question mark here. So already here, it's kind of very, very subtle. Um, and uh, you might ask, OK, here we have a face. Where is the face on this side? Actually, <laughs> this guy here is, is a face of something. So there is also a face, but I, I don't need the, the discussion. And I can continue the table here. Um, How much time? Well, in principle, zero, but maybe a little more. Because we're, 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 I, I think we started late. I didn't check my watch. According to the program, we're slightly over time, but I think we started late. So maybe certainly another five minutes oh, easily. Okay. Anyway, we have a long break, so we can. Okay, okay, yes. And it's interesting. But I can do one. One. And uh, on both sides, we have the central the charges. For the, the, the A theory, the central charge is the one we already know. And uh, for the B theory, it's horrible. Okay. Okay. So this is uh, the central we met before. This is uh, this is a complex by the Taylor modular, Taylor modular here. Plus a uh, sort of B field complex that model is. This is a uh, Chen character's version of top class. This is uh, topological information of the sheet. And uh, we can study the, the phase of Z. And then we can impose the condition of stability wall, marginal stability wall, which is on both sides the same as the argument of Z of some. Uh, gamma, uh, let's say, gamma one is equal to the argument of z of some gamma two. So for this, it's just a gamma one and gamma two. For this, for the, the b side, this is our chart. Okay, here this is our chart. Okay. So in other words, for both a mod and b mod, we should discuss stability walls in the modular. What modular? Now the modular here, the new dependence here, for A model is a complex modular. For the B model is a simplex Taylor modular, simplex modular. So we do couple, so simplex is coupled complex, complex is coupled to simplex. So this is a full color structure. And uh, why am I interested in the wall, uh, stability walls? Because there is a famous wall crossing phenomenon, which means if you want to fix a topological invariant of, say, the spread Lagrangian, and you want to ask uh, the topological invariant of the Lagrangian class, and you want to ask, is it possible to find a special Lagrangian representative of that cohomology class? Then the answer depends on whether you are on the side, on this side, on, on the other side of some wall defined like this. Basically because it, if you, 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 it's easy to find singular representatives because if, if your, your charge is a, a sum of two charges, for each charge you just pick a representative and then take a transverse intersection. But it's hard to Desingularize it to a non-singular representative, and if you apply the standard geometric analysis package to it, you have to glue some local model, and the volume of the local model has to be positive, and that gives you the inequality, and that inequality can only be satisfied on one side of the wall. So if you you are in this side, say, and you are able to find the representative, then your BPS counting, no matter how you define it, should count this. But if you cross the wall, then it's gone. If you want the continuity of the generating function, you have to decompose your charge and receive contributions from them uh, separately. So there is a very sophisticated uh, formalism, which is concept which is solved by wall crossing formula dealing with this. So the full version of mirror symmetry should be generalized mirror correspondence from this blackboard to this one. Okay, it's already open down here. So how can we do it over here? Something is possible. But if you really look at it, 
this part is quite soft. It doesn't involve actually constructing the object. It's just uh, computing some integrals. So we might be able to verify that. And if you remember, <laughs> here we exactly have a situation like this. So over the event horizon, we have a very non-generic situation of intersecting of stability walls for the A model. So you might ask, well, since we know mirror symmetry about K3, if I apply mirror symmetry to the over the horizon of the black hole, is it true that the mirror symmetry would relate this non-generic intersection of stability walls for spatial Lagrangians to uh, similar non-generic intersection of stability walls in the space of bridge land type stabilities for derived categories of coherent sheets of K3 surfaces? And uh, I proved the answer is yes. <laughs> okay, so I view this as a very simple case of this much more refined version of the combination of homological and SYZ uh, mirror conjecture. The proof itself is, uh, is, is elementary, and the, there are some technical issues, but once you know what you're looking for, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's computational verification. So the neutrino part here is, it's a comp if without this picture, well, without this picture, it's completely mystery. It's just like a coincidence with our purpose, coincidence with our motivation. But now I see this is predicted by mirror symmetry. And also Chen just asked, is this complex, large complex limit? No. So this is, this is a, a, an example of mirror symmetry outside large complex limit. So this is also something to do. So basically my, there are many other, I think not many people are doing this kind of stuff, but there, there are two more work. One is due to uh, Douglas, Rembetra, and Yao. Basically, they can use a tractor mechanism to derive the bottom of all these inequality for the Chen classes of stable bundles. It's amazing. Also, in even more, they can derive concept of the mass sophisticated wall crossing formula, also using the uh, tractor mechanism. So I believe there, there is a, there, there, there's, there's some value here. Sometimes it's useful to treat Calabria's threefold as a part of the 10-dimensional space-time background and uh, let the four-dimensional to be very non-trivial, say a black hole. So in other words, we should be really studying the shape of inner spaces, the title of Yale's book. Initially, I thought I would use the shape of inner spaces as the title of my talk, but I'm afraid y'all might be here, so I gave up. <laughs> anyway, I'll stop here. So, thank you very much. So that was very enjoyable. Are there questions? Yes. Yeah, I just wondered if you have an explicit map between the two different Moshe-Lai spaces. Oh, yeah, we, we, we have. For, uh, for K3, it's just a, in, an involution on the period of the map. It's uh, some classic work done in 1990s. It goes to itself. Or it's it an involution. Yes. So, of the period of the map, because uh, by Torelli, you think we can replace the study of module by the study of period. Right, and so, so can you sort of explicitly see that these two formally agree on this? Yes, it's, it's obtained by explicit calculation. Uh, I just uh, use the known formula and uh, check I can satisfy the technical assumptions of bridge land and the direct calculation verifies. Other questions? So, so what is the yeah. quantum correction? Yeah, it's quantum correction. That's why I why I don't start in type two A because I can't control the correction. Oh, okay. Yes. So, so you're computing the I, I'm I'm doing this only for uh, type two B. Actually, I didn't write it, but uh, in uh, Douglas, Rembrandt, and Yalsberg, they're actually using a track mechanism to study on this side, but still they don't quite trust this, so they use mirror symmetry to map everything to here and they use the track mechanism here, and then they can derive the bottom of loss inequality. But the definition is that at least not the, the combination, but the definition is that clearly defined? 
the definition of this guy. Yeah. The, this is a leading term in large complex, in yeah, yeah. large volume. Yeah, yeah. And uh, for, for threefold, I think there is a maybe four loop term, so forth, and plus instant operations which are out of control. Mm -hmm. But for K3, there are some strong super symmetric constraint. This is the rule of thumb, but nevertheless, bridge then checked by brutal force that for K3, even if we ignore this, it gives a stability condition in his sense. So it's, it's fine for K3. But strictly speaking, here it's not K3, it's K3 times torus. So it's not obvious that I can use that. So I, I didn't try to work on this side, I just worked on this side. More questions? Thank you not. So we thank the speaker again. Uh, let's see. Well, we were supposed to have a 25-minute break till 15:30. Maybe we make it till 15 minutes till 35. I don't know.